I hope you don't mind me taking a moment to say something, but something that's always bothered me is when an individual has any kind of platform and they don't use it to speak up for others at a time when they should. So I hope you don't mind me taking a moment on this final show to use this one. We need to clear this up. I have no desire to stop working on the radio. None whatsoever. But the BBC management, in their infinite wisdom, have decided to change local radio. And I don't fit into their plans. So I am getting dumped. I'm not whining. I'm not complaining. It always comes to that in the end. In this profession, you always end up getting dumped. And it's my turn. And I'm 74 and a big junk. So what does it matter? I'll do Claire. In October of 2022, the BBC announced a whole swathe of changes to its local radio output. News of this spread quickly, including the fact that 139 redundancies were to be made across local radio services, a number that was later reduced to 48. I've documented the demise of AM radio services across the UK on this channel at great length. Each transmitter closure is an upsetting loss within a huge part of our radio history, but local radio is changing too, and not in a good way. I've been following every news article on this restructure for the last 12 months, and I thought I'd give you an outline, based on these news items, on what exactly is going on, and what we can expect. The corporation, according to a paper on the government's website, initially announced that, and I quote, all 39 BBC local radio stations would continue with their own dedicated local programming from 6am to 2pm on weekdays. Between 2pm and 6pm on weekdays, the BBC would produce 18 afternoon programmes across England, with a number of local stations sharing programming. Between 6pm and 10pm on weekdays, there would be 10 local programmes across England. This would also apply all day on Saturday and on Sunday mornings. The BBC said these programmes would serve areas that broadly mirror the BBC's existing local television areas, consisting of the North West and North East, Yorkshire and Lincolnshire, the Midlands, London and East, and South and South West. Plans also said that a national All England programme would be launched after 10pm across the week and from 2pm on Sundays. It also said that local news bulletins and sports coverage would continue. Naturally, there was quite a response from the public, stakeholders and local radio broadcasters when this news was announced. According to the paper on the government's website, and I quote, On the 24th of January this year, the BBC said that it had listened carefully to the feedback they'd received from staff and audiences. In response, it announced several changes to the original proposals, which involved increasing the proposed number of afternoon weekday programmes from 18 to 20 between 2pm and 6pm, increasing the proposed number of weekend daytime shows from 12 to 18 between 10am and 2pm on Saturday and Sunday mornings, revising some of the proposed airings of stations in response to feedback from audiences, and the BBC also said that it was maintaining their commitment to dedicated programming on BBC local radio for black and Asian audiences. These shows would be moved from their Sunday evening time slots to new programme slots on Monday and Friday evenings. The move is designed to make these shows more accessible. Stations featuring this programming would also increase from 20 to 33. Ofcom, whilst agreeing with the analysis of listening data that apparently underpins the BBC's proposals, expressed its disappointment with the lack of detail and clarity contained within the policy announcements. Other stakeholder responses focused on the possible consequences of the changes for local communities, their impact on black and Asian programming, and the effect these changes will have on the BBC local radio staff. The UK government has said that the BBC must make sure it continues to provide distinctive and genuinely local radio services, and raised its concerns with the BBC leadership. News outlets reported that the Department of Culture, Media and Sport Committee said that it was concerned over the plans by the BBC and how it will impact on the future of radio. The committee said, We continue to be concerned about the impact of the BBC's digital first strategy on linear TV and radio audiences. Sharing content across large areas risks undermining the sense of localness that has, until now, made BBC local radio distinct. 
One of the clips I played at the start of this video was Alan Bezik, a broadcaster who currently presents the late night phone-in on BBC Radio Manchester, BBC Radio Merseyside and BBC Radio Lancashire. He's a household name in local radio and has been for decades. He's said numerous times that he'll only ever stop when the BBC decides it's had enough of him, and it seems that time has come. Other broadcasters on local radio have also been hit by these changes. Sophie Little, a presenter with BBC Radio Norfolk, has voiced her personal opinion on the changes across the network. These cuts are unbelievably unfair to those who need local public service broadcasting the most. But I will say this how I see it. I feel the cuts are ableist, ageist, and they place economic barriers for some people too. Speaking on her final Treasure Quest show on the station recently, Sophie explained how the statement she read out went against all of the training she's had and was nervous how bosses would react, but felt it needed saying. The full audio has since been cut from BBC Sounds, but was captured and shared by Aircheck Downloads, which I'll link below. Many broadcasters and journalists participated in industrial action over the summer, and June saw BBC journalists pass a vote of no confidence in the BBC local senior leadership team. 93% of those surveyed indicated that they no longer had trust in the team. During the first week of shared programmes, BBC local radio stations suffered major technical issues in the south and east. The first round of new shared programmes started on September the 4th, with more regions to follow in the coming months. The technical issues included split links playing together, news bulletins going out in multiple places instead of in separate regions, and audio being faded in and out. One instance saw 30 seconds of silence following the news bulletin at 6pm. There's an audio compilation of these gaffes which I'll also link below. As time goes on, more and more broadcasters are going to be affected by these changes within local radio, which is never nice. But what do you think? How does this change to local radio affect you? Does it feel as personal as it once did? Tell me in the comments your thoughts and feelings on these changes as we watch FM radio within the UK continue to merge and congeal into one generic mass, with no personality or sense of individuality.